right, Bree. Let's do this. Let's get after these squirrels. I mean, should I go full on? Oh, absolutely. We need these? Listen, okay, we're gonna these... glass for squirrels, y'all. Take the caps off <laughs> so you can see. There you go. Got it. You got it now? I got it. Okay. <laughs> Everyone thinks these are cute. These what? things are pesky little animals. They're, 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 they're tasty though. They were made to be fried up. Today's dish is buttermilk fried squirrel and quail. We're gonna to top it off with some chili oil, some fresh chives, and shaved Parmesan. It's going to be delicious. Here he goes, he's going up. Where? Oh. Right there, Bree. I, you really His want head. me to take oh. that shot up there? Yeah. Okay. I told you, we find them in trees. My name is Bree Van Scotter. I'm a professionally trained chef, author, and hunter. My mission is to create some of the most amazing wild game recipes with meat I gather on my hunting and fishing adventures. This is Wilderness to Table. Wilderness to Table, and this episode is all about those cute furry creatures we all love, but are actually really tasty, and I'm talking about squirrel. Today, I'm going hunting for squirrel, and I am gonna show you just how tasty it is, because if you didn't know, I have squirrel recipes in my latest cookbook. But today, I'm gonna show you a whole new recipe. But first, I gotta go get dinner. So, let's go. Very serious hunt today, y'all. We're going after squirrel. So let me show you what I'm taking with me in the field. I am taking my Hawa Model 1100 with a Riton 4x16 scope. I'm going to use Riton binos as well to glass for those squirrel, those pesky squirrels. You never know where they'll show up. First squirrel down. Then I'm going to be using 22 ammo, but I'm gonna change it up and mix it up with some Remington. And because you know I never leave the field without a pocket knife, I will be carrying a Benchmade pocket knife with me as well. Okay. Nope. Oh. Son of a... Because we might be in some palm groves, I'm wearing Irish Setter snake boots and DSG clothing. So today's hunt is one of the most overlooked hunts in all of hunting. The squirrel hunt. Yep. That's right, squirrel. Squirrel hunting is a pastime that has been enjoyed by hunters young and old and is one of the easiest ways to get out into the backwoods for some quick therapy. A trusty 22 and some boots and you're ready to have some fun. So my first day hunting squirrel with my guide Taylor was a successful one. We got one squirrel, which is definitely not enough to make a meal. So my buddy Jordan and I are gonna go out and hunt some more squirrels so that I can get dinner on the table tonight, plus, he also says he's going to teach me the right way to hunt a squirrel. This is serious uh, business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're, this is war. We're going in after these squirrels, and we're not playing around. So when I get up there and I tree the squirrel, I need Oh, that you. was my paint. Yeah, your war paint. Oh, my war paint. I didn't bring mine, just because I didn't know if your audience was ready for that yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Three right here. Where? Right on the back side of this tree. See this oak right here, straight in front of us? This little tree? He's your eye height level, right past the little tree. Oh, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, okay. Right here, right here, right here. Here he goes, he's going up. 
Oh. Right there, Bree. I, you really want me to take oh. that shot up there? Yeah. Okay. I told you we find them in trees. <laughs> okay, I asked the internet, and here's what it had to say about squirrels. The earliest fossil evidence for squirrels is dated back to about 36 million years ago. A squirrel can smell food under a foot of snow. Okay, and here's one. A squirrel's front teeth never stop growing. Okay, random facts about squirrels, check. Let's move on. Man, that was the one we were after. I'm a little <coughs> sleep over him tonight, Bree. It's poor. Just finding goodies. Here, Jordan, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that'll go Don't on the mantle. Don't say I never gave you anything. That'll definitely go on that mantle back at home. <clears throat> Wherever he went, he is not oh, moving. Oh, he's, he's in between us. Him. He's looking at us right now. He knows you mean business. Yeah, I do. Oh, there he is. Where? High level oak tree right next to the palm. Oh. Oh. All right, on the back side. Come on, we gotta get um, after the squirrel now, Bree. Okay. So my guy Taylor and I, we decided to take a little break and take it easy and have a little fun. We took the 22 out and we went squirrel hunting. Oh my gosh, we had such a blast. It was awesome. We got a few squirrel, which I have here. But then to top it all off, my other guy, David, he actually brought me some quail. So today's dish is buttermilk fried squirrel and quail. We're gonna top it off with some chili oil, some fresh chives and shaved Parmesan. It's going to be delicious. So let's get started. I'm going to add buttermilk to my quail and squirrel. The buttermilk is not only gonna help tenderize it a bit, but it's also going to act as an adhesive for my crust, which we're gonna fry into a golden brown. It's gonna be amazing. Then I always season at every chance I get. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh minced garlic. Then I'm also going to season, it was right in front of my face, with salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna give that a gentle little mix so that garlic can get in there and those spices can get in there. So I'm just gonna let this quail and squirrel marinate in the buttermilk while I make the crust. So it's super easy. We're going to take equal parts cornstarch. We're gonna dump it in here and panko breadcrumbs. I love panko breadcrumbs just because they're lighter and fluffier and crunchier, not as dense as regular coarse breadcrumbs. So I prefer to use that. Then I'm going to season again with kosher salt and pepper like a tablespoon of salt in this one. And a little bit more pepper. And I'm going to jazz it up with a little bit of chili powder, just like that. Then we are going to mix it up. And this is going to be the breading for our quail and squirrel. And the buttermilk is gonna glue it all together so that it'll keep the nice crust on there while it fries. And then I'm simply gonna dredge the pieces in the flour mixture and into the fryer. So we got that going. Now let's get our oil on. I have peanut oil right here. I'm just gonna add to my pan. I'm gonna fill it up about a quarter of an inch up from the top. So I don't need to fill the whole pan just like that. Now I'm gonna get my pan on high. And then once I drop the squirrel and quail in, I'm probably gonna reduce the heat just so that the temperature stays even. So it's on high heat, get my pan on there. Now I'm just gonna wait till the oil is nice and hot and you can tell it's ready when the oil starts to ripple a little bit. And when you put your hand over it like this, it's, it's warm. Oh, there, there he is. All right, we got him. Come on. Hunt him up, boys. Let's go. Step over here. Oh, there he goes. He's moving. Look up. You can catch him moving. 
at the top of this palm. Oh, oh. Did you see him? <laughs> you got I him. I got him. You got him, Bree. <sighs> Come on down. Yeah, here. buddy! That's it. Good job. Good shooting. That's a, that's a lot of stocking, man. That, I'm telling you, that's intense. What's your squirrel dance? <laughs> I know you dance in the kitchen when you're cooking. <laughs> oh no, you gotta go with the merry-go-round like this. So I'm out hunting squirrel with my guide Taylor and he gets a text message from my other guide David. He says we absolutely have to make our way back to camp because he just spotted a covey of quail. So we book it back to camp, get my shotgun and run out to meet him. We're gonna try to use sounds, okay? Then we'll go with the dogs later, but this is something cool. Sure, let's do that it. That works well, okay? Yeah. We got a whole covey to come in on us, a wild covey. There's probably 15 birds in that covey. Yeah. So we run out to meet David and there he is. He's got his phone in his hand and I'm, it really struck me as being odd. And then he tells me we're going to call in these wild quail which I have never called in a quail. So this was rather interesting. All right, guys. He said he saw a covey of wild quail right in this bush that we're standing probably 30 feet from, and he's playing music for these quail that sounds like quail. And I'm just in awe because this is a first for me. I have never done that. Take him, take him. That's kind of a unique oh, way, that's kind of a unique way to quail hunt, but is it not pretty good? Yeah. That's pretty You've never done it like that, have you? No, and they right. were I couldn't really see them. We did manage to get at least two quail out, and I took a shot, but unfortunately they were flying in the opposite direction. So that just leads me to believe that the quail were probably sitting in that bush laughing at us for calling in quail. Here's an awesome little tip for you. If you don't have a thermometer, but you want to get your oil hot, but you don't want it too hot, all you have to do is take a little bit of your breadcrumbs, put it in the pan, and see how they start sizzling right away, and they will eventually make a little popping noise, like when you put them in the fryer, and then you know it's good to go. If your fryer, if your frying oil is too low, then they're just going to, no, like hardly any bubbles are gonna come up, and they're gonna sink to the bottom. Our oil is up to temp, so our quail and squirrel are ready to get fried. So let's start off by getting them into this awesome breadcrumb mixture. I'm just gonna mix it around with my hands really lightly. Then I'm gonna take my little pieces of quail and squirrel and dredge them liberally in this flour mixture. I like to press them down. Then I'm gonna get them into the fryer. These are our quail breasts, which are delicious fried. Right into the pan. We've got some squirrel here. Dredge those up. Press the flour in, get those buddies in there. We can fit one more, a few more pieces in there. So when you're frying anything, you always wanna make sure not to crowd the pan too much because it actually reduces the temperature of the oil and thus you're basically kind of poaching your meat or your protein or vegetable, whatever you happen to be frying. So don't crowd the pan. Now I'm gonna turn them over so that they cook on all sides. Start with our quail breast. Oh, but look at that golden brown. It's so beautiful. Oh, and these squirrels, look at that. Whoever said you can't eat squirrels and make it look good, right? This looks fantastic. 
And my guides down here say that squirrels have, they've been eating squirrels for decades over here. So, when in Rome. Now let these fry up. Ooh, they look delicious. So you know that saying, cook it till it's golden brown? Yes, well, sometimes that is true, but it's always important to have a thermometer just to make sure the meat is cooked through. You wanna make sure that internal temp is up to temp. <laughs> so I like to use a thermometer, especially with wild game. So I'm just gonna quick temp it. And perfect, thanks. So I'm gonna turn this off. Beautiful. I'm going to clear my board so that I can plate. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful. Ooh. These are so beautiful. And then our last breast, our last quail. Okay, so we are not done yet. We are going to plate these bad boys and make them uber pretty and delicious. So I like to just give my plate a little height and build them up. Now, the fun part, we get to garnish it. So I'm going to chop some fresh chives. I think every dish that you make when you add chopped herbs to it is always, it just like, beautifies it. It just makes it beautiful. It brings out all the flavors. They become brighter. So I'm going to add some fresh chopped chives. Ooh, and it gives beautiful color and greenery. Then because they came right out of the fryer, now is the perfect time to hit them with a little bit of salt. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of Maldon sea salt because when they have the oil still on them and it's still, it's still going inside, it makes that salt stick to the crust and it's delicious. Now, to finish it off, I'm going to take some Parmesan cheese and I'm going to show you a fancy way to cut your Parmesan cheese. I like to use a peeler that you would just peel potatoes with and you take it and you make beautiful little slices with your Parmesan cheese. It comes out like that. I'm just gonna make a few more slices. Everybody loves Parmesan. So delicious. And then I like to just kind of break them up and tear them so they're kind of rustic. I'll just break them up and then I'm just gonna put those all over my plate like that. And then my secret ingredient to this dish. It is so good. You can find this in any grocery store in the international section. It's called Chili Crisp and it's so good. It's got chili oil and garlic chips. Ooh, it is so delicious. So I am going to take a little bit of this Chili Crisp and I am going to drizzle it all over the top, just like that. and then along the plate, just so that it looks pretty, like that. Oh, this is to die for. I mean, have you ever seen quail and squirrel this pretty? I don't think so. If you want the recipe to my buttermilk fried quail and squirrel, and if you wanna see all the gear that we used on today's episode, head over to Sportsman's Guide. But remember, if you don't have quail or squirrel in your kitchen, you can easily replace it with chicken. This is one you're definitely gonna wanna use when you're having a party and your guests come over because it is going to be a hit. Next time on Wilderness to Table. Welcome to Wilderness to Table. And in this episode, we are going after tilapia and gar. So we're gonna be doing a little bow fishing and a little gigging on these airboats. So awesome, let's do it again. Oh, we're gonna keep doing it. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh good. Oh, man. Oh my God, you son of a Get him in, get him in. Yeah!
Oh yeah, that's where it's at. If you want the recipe for my cornmeal crusted tilapia and you want to know where I got all the gear that I used in this episode, head to Sportsman's Guide. But you don't have to fish for your own tilapia. You can go to the store and make this tonight. Welcome to Let's Talk About It, where tacos are my jam. And this morning, I am going to make my favorite breakfast tacos for me and my crew. So watch, they're super easy, but they're super delicious. Let's get started. I'm using chorizo, because it's my favorite, and that's how Mexican tacos should be done. And I'm just gonna add all of this chorizo to the pan. I'm just adding a little bit of butter just so that it won't stick right away. I'm gonna get this in the pan. Get that going. Break it up. So we just want to crumble this all up. Turn the heat up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook for just a little bit. You need to keep an eye on it, but I'm gonna make some garnishes while we wait. So, we always need sour cream with our tacos, but I'm spicing it up with a little bit of sriracha inside of it to make it a little spicy. It's so good, it's my favorite combo. So we're just gonna give those a whirl. So yummy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. Once that's all mixed in, we're gonna set that aside. Voila. Now I'm going to check my pan really quick. Check it. Just wanna break up the little clumps so I have little clumps of chorizo. Turn the heat down. Now we're going to slice some scallions to go on top. Quick chop. Just a quick chop. These are just garnishes going on top. Now, I love eggs and chorizo, right? And typically you eat your tacos with scrambled eggs and chorizo mixed in and maybe a few toppings. Well, nope, not this time. We're going to have chorizo fried egg tacos because let's all face it, we all love that runny yolk and it's fabulous and it's amazing and that's what we're gonna put on our tacos. So I think our chorizo is almost finished cooking. So I'm reducing the heat just to let that sit and finish. Oh my God, that spices, it smells so good. It reminds me of like when I was a kid waking up and like in the morning, my mom would make chorizo and it was like my favorite smell ever. Oh. Okay, gonna let that go. Just a little longer. I'm gonna top it off some pickled jalapenos, some cotija cheese, and a fried egg, and some avocado. It's gonna be delicious. So, you wanna see how I do my fried egg? Let, let's do it. I'm gonna get my pan on. Okay, I'm gonna go to like medium, low heat. So, the misconception is that you need high heat for your fried egg, but actually eggs all eggs, this is eggs across the board, scrambled, fried, over easy, whatever. You want your temperature on the lower side. So, we're gonna melt this butter. When you're using, when you're cooking a fried egg, you definitely want a non-stick pan, y'all, okay? Just makes life a little easier and a less messier. Okay, we're gonna let that melt. Crack my egg. We're gonna attempt to flip it on camera, y'all. Okay. I'm gonna give my chorizo whirl while that's going. Speaking of eggs, when I make omelets, so to speak, or 
scrambled eggs in my pan. I actually don't use a fork or anything and I whisk them in the pan and I use Chinese wooden chopsticks on a nonstick pan. Look at that egg. So we want to flip the egg when most of the whites have been totally cooked. Right now you can still see some of the whites aren't cooked yet. So I'm just going to wait a few more minutes. We do want the edges of that egg white to get nice and crispy and delicious. You know you love that part too, right? It's, it's one of my favorites. Bam! That's how you do it. Then you take it off the heat. Turn the heat off. Now, we're going to turn the heat off on our chorizo. Then, we're going to get our tortilla, tortillas going. And season with olive oil. Then, let me get more tortillas. Then, I'm going to spoon some chorizo in the middle. Each taco. You know what? I'm only going to plate one right now. Because I want to show you how marvelous it looks with the fried egg, okay? Okay got that going. We have our fried egg. Spread them out a little. Then we are going to let's sprinkle with the green onions first. Then we're going to go in with some pickled jalapenos. First I'm going to take this one off. Bam. Look at that. Then, we're going to do a dollop of our sriracha sour cream right in the middle. And, um, hello, who wouldn't want to eat that for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, because we're being honest.